Hello, Tommy Hardware here, your DIY instructional guy. Today we're going to talk about replacing the O-ring set on a Jandy Never Lube valve. Why would you want to do that? Well, you're probably having one or a couple of different problems. Uh, most likely is you're getting water leakage around the upper cap here or perhaps uh, out the uh, stem of the valve. But another likely problem is that you're drawing air into the filter system into the pumps and this is caused by degraded o-rings it introduces air into the system and causes the system to uh, bubble up in the pools with air bubbles uh, and also gurgle when it starts up how do you know that you have the correct valve well pretty simple you look at the very top of the valve the jandy valve and you'll see written right on it Jandy never lube a valve. So we've got the right valve. He's come in different variations. Uh, usually a three port or two port. In this case, you've got a three port, one, two, three. Two port would only be one and two. And the models that this O ring repair will service are the model 4715, 4716, and 4717. Here's what you're going to need to fix the valve. A good quality o-ring lube the o-ring set itself now these o-rings are available a lot of places your local pool store or online uh, they range from anywhere from five to fifteen dollars my recommendation is get them on Amazon four and a half bucks it's what I paid for mine got them next day and you can see the outer cap o-ring and the two inner shaft o-rings are included in the set and then lastly a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat tip screwdriver Common sense here, uh, make absolutely sure you've got the power disconnected. You do not want the system turning on while the valve is disassembled or you're going to have a flood on your hands. The system we're working on today has seven different Jandy valves. Uh, you might see them automated where there's a motor that drives the valve. In this case, it's a manual valve. It's a three port and this is a model 4717 problem on this particular valve is very typical. Uh, we're getting water leakage around the case. If you look closely, you can see all these mineral deposits uh, that have been created over time. Again, make sure the power's off. Uh, the other thing is to get the orientation of the valve, to, to look at how the settings are uh, before you start. So after you repair the valve, you get it right back to where you began. Best bet is just take a picture of it like we're doing now. Um, you'll notice here to get started uh, the handle, get your thumb screw, turn down nut, pull off the handle. And it's important to again look at the orientation. You notice closely here, you've got two tabs. Uh, these are facing downward in this valve. Uh, you just want to make sure that you get the handle going perpendicular and that those tabs are facing down when we reassemble it. Okay, there's eight screws. Let's take them out. Okay, so we're getting the very last screw out here. Uh, take them all and put them in a place where they won't get scattered. And there you happen, have it. Now, the cap that you see here, uh, it's been in place over time. So this is where you're going to want to get uh, a little flathead screwdriver here and to pry very gingerly and the cap will just fall away. All right, let's get okay, from here the uh, air vac in there as the air rushes in and there comes the water. All right, and it's out. We'll let some of that water drain out for a second. Okay, here's a close-up of the part. Uh, you can see this is the outer cap O-ring. And then down on the inner stem, up inside that cap, are two O-rings. We'll take a look at those in a second. All right, so simply pull the stem out. There it goes. 
that's the diverter stem that you see right there. And the O-rings, they stay up inside the cap. If you look really carefully, you can just see the shadow there. There are two O-rings. So there's the outer lid O-ring, and there's the two inner diverter stem O-rings. Just take your screwdriver and pry those out, and uh, we're gonna wipe it clean and put the new ones in. Okay, while you have it apart, it's important that you clean your surfaces. So along the outer edge of the cap O-ring and on the inner diverter seals, you want to take a uh, cloth, wipe it real clean, and then also on the diverter itself around the base of the stem, get this part nice and clean, and it wouldn't hurt just to uh, towel off the actual diverter. You can see there's a silicon O-ring all the way around it. Uh, that does not need to be replaced, unless, of course, yours is torn, but that's uh, not usually the case, and just a good wipe down to make sure it's clean. And then the other mating surface, the actual valve that's permanently involved in this, or installed in the system, uh, you want to wipe down this, the surface that this mates to, uh, and make sure that there's no debris, uh, dust, dirt, nothing's in the way, and that you have a nice, clean surface. Here's the old new O-ring set. These are the old ones that were just removed. See, they're all greasy and dirty because they're starting to deteriorate. Uh, they're also not very flexible. Uh, kind of uh, almost brittle. Uh, the new O-ring set, you want to take those out, uh, take your O-ring lube and grease them up real good. Okay, we'll uh, put it back in place. It's kind of hard to do this. I don't have a tripod on the camera and trying to do it with just one hand. The best bet on the last two shaft O-rings is uh, not to put it on the stem first, but rather to place it in the cap like this and push them down in there nice and snug. You can see they're flush in. There's the outer cap O-ring. There's the two center O-rings. And then at this point, all we'll need to do is reinsert the shaft back into the cap. And then we're ready to put this assembly back into the main valve body. Okay, here it is. I just simply pushed the shaft diverter into the O-rings. Uh, it comes out the other side here, as you can see. All right, and we're ready to screw it back in. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stick it in. This is where, what we talked about earlier, the orientation uh, is very important to make sure you get it lined up properly. But we had said there were two tabs here and here, and they pointed down. Uh, so, you center the valve into the casing. The two tabs are pointing down and give it a good snug press and you can see that the holes here are all lining up. So, we're good to go. All we need to do is put the screws back in. As you torque down your screws, uh, it's best to go in a cross pattern. So, pick one then put the opposite one in, pick another, put the opposite in, so on and so forth. Do it in a star pattern, and then when you're all done, give it one last snug down. Now, to make sure that we've got this correct, we'll place our handle on, and if everything's good, it'll be right back where we started. So as you recall, uh, the handle was perpendicular. We had the two tabs pointing down, so we know that everything's lined up. And then last, we're going to put in our thumb screw to hold the handle down. Okay, we're good to go. Turn the power on, fire up the system, make sure we have no leaks, and enjoy the weekend. This is Tommy Hardware. Hope you liked it. Uh, give me a like, and I'll have more videos in the future. Thanks. Bye.